वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ फिक्सी फूड वाता सीजन टू फूड फ्रंटियर्स द पॉडकास्ट दैट डाइव डीप इन टू द स्टोरीज बिहाइंड द सक्सेस ऑफ बिजनेस लीडर्स एंड द वेंचर्स आई एम योर होस्ट कतीब एंड टूडे वी हैव अ स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस मुस्कान एबर्ट द फाउंडर ऑफ मेस्टेला बाय मुस्कान अ सेल्फ ड्रिवन शेफ टर्न एंटरप्रनर मुस्कान इज रेवल्यूशनाइजिंग द कलिनरी इंडस्ट्री इन इंडिया विद हर गोमे केटरिंग एंड एलिगेंटली क्यूरेटेड डेजर्ट्स Mestella has been creating waves in the gourmet food space and today Muskan is here to share her entrepreneurial journey and inspire all of us. Welcome to the show Muskan. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited about our conversation. Muskan, your journey from chef to entrepreneur is really fascinating. Could you start by telling us a little bit about your transition from high pressure kitchens like ABC Kitchen in New York and Oberoi in New Delhi? to now founding your own venture so when i was working at abc kitchen it was the turning point in my career i would say because that's where i realized that this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and the chefs were so encouraging and they were so kind and same for the obroy like the main reason i joined was for chef stu because i wanted to train under him and i worked there for a year and the timings were very harsh but i made it through and honestly the transition was very slow because i started i started working from home in 2020 during covid so i was just cooking for my family and then slowly people started ordering stuff so it took me a couple of years to actually move to a production kitchen and which was in 2022 and it was a slow process but uh, i would say that where i am today i am happy that i took a step at a time and it's going well <laughs> so it would be very correct to say that you took a leap of faith and yes. you landed successfully yes definitely 100% <laughs> so that's so inspiring <laughs> it's definitely not easy to transition from a comfortable job to entrepreneurship What was the biggest challenge that you faced when you made that jump and how did you overcome it Honestly the major challenge was uncertainty of orders because I just started out and like there were weeks when I had no orders and obviously there was financial instability so that was very like very difficult for me to like actually digest that I don't have orders but i just kept believing in myself and i was confident about what i was offering so i just kept going and i i reached out to people and there were hard days but eventually it started to get better so coming from a high pressure kitchen like abc new york and oberoi to then getting to what you are telling in your experience was a very lean period that must have really been scary at it times it was very scary it was very scary and like when i was working it was just i had to walk in the kitchen work and then leave but this is like a 24 hour job like you have to take care of everything from marketing to like small small things like if the kitchen the electricity is not there something or the other keeps happening so but i'm very happy where i am so i'm glad that i took that step and started my own venture your company mestella by muskan has developed a reputation for delivering gourmet experiences and beautifully curated dessert tables could you share how you built the brand mestella from scratch i would start with telling you by the i would start by telling you the meaning of the name mestella so i visited finland in 2020 and it was It, it is my favorite place so the name comes from there and it it's a finnish word and it means to savor so that was the first step that i took to like start the new venture and like uh, uh, deciding the name and the logo after that i started focusing on getting good quality ingredients from good suppliers I started looking for a kitchen space which was a very difficult task because the rentals are so high the electric electricity for commercial spaces is so high so I just wanted to make sure that it's a nice area it's enough space so that's what uh made it so difficult to start but 
then I eventually found a space that I still work from and in terms of marketing I would say I did not do a lot of social media marketing mm -hmm. I was more focused for organic growth which was Word slow tomorrow. yeah which is still slow but I think it's still better because like on social media people are selling mediocre products but they are they might get one order but it's not a like they won't get repeated customers i guess the word of mouth gives it a bit of authenticity so yeah. when somebody goes out of their way to tell their friends and family that this is something that i really like that would definitely yes. be helping your brand definitely and those are the people who actually get repeated orders and they come with that like they they have the confidence that i would be able to do it so that is there yes so what really res resonated with me was one of our previous guests on the podcast was very he built his model business model upon the very fact that rentals is what kills most of the food businesses so definitely i, I understand it must have been very difficult for you and that's really incredible it's clear that a lot of thought went into building the brand from the name to the marketing for entrepreneurs starting out what would you say are some of the most important aspects to building a uh, what is a successful brand so i would say when you start a brand you need to focus on consistency you have to promise yourself first that you are going to show up every day and you are going to make an effort to actually maybe try something new on the days when you don't have orders and you need to be consistent with the quality every time which is kills so many brands because in the beginning they are selling like very good quality products and slowly they start deteriorating the quality and it just like literally shuts down the place so it can't be one of those new year resolutions <laughs> no. definitely that is definitely a good point so you've touched upon uh, building a brand but let's not talk about the challenges that you faced in the culinary industry specifically like as a gourmet catering company what were some of the unique challenges that you encountered and how did you navigate them so first was very high competition i would say because there are so many caterers in delhi like and they are very good for sure and i just focused on myself that what i am offering is unique i mean i'm not the best but i can promise you that you and your guests will have a good experience with us and i will do everything to make that event special for you so that was one thing and the other was dealing with people and like talking to them for the event because honestly i'm such a people pleaser like it's probably my weakness and my strength but sometimes it did not help so i have to like keep my calm and you know be more professional at times to be able to actually grow a business and not just like be yes yes and, and say just yes to everything yes so it is you'd say equally important to recognize one's weaknesses yes definitely com definitely like start to compensate for them yes scaling while maintaining quality is no easy feat were there any moments of failure and if so how did you recover from them there was this one very bad catering oh god i still have nightmares about it <laughs> but it was my fault also like the timing and like it was just so chaotic that it was the worst day i would say it was just like it was such an extensive menu and i did not expect that you know it would go that bad because i was prepared i was just prepared and my team was prepared but something or the other kept happening it was a it was a difficult day but by the end of it i would say like when i spoke to the client i apologized i offered the refund which they very kindly denied like they wanted to pay but i think i learned so much from that day so much that you always have to be one step ahead and 
you should just be there before time so you you got to experience the murphy's law first and everything that can go wrong yeah. will go wrong will go wrong yes so, uh, i guess it helped you to prepare uh, in advance from the next time yes it made like i trained my staff i trained myself to you know to not let this happen ever again because it's not about me like it's about the client's experience and their event and it was very important day for them so i think i ruined it but yeah but uh, but a blessing in disguise for you maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's a really great takeaway adaptability and transparency go a long way now for the inspiring entrepreneurs listening what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out so who is just starting out or i maybe would thinking say, to start yes. out yes uh i think you should just take that risk take the first step i promise it will get easier it will get better but just don't overthink if you overthink you would just not be able to start soon so just because for me i would say it was such a big learning process like i did not have so many things in mind i did not you know i did not know that these things also i'll have to think about later so i learned during the process i would say you would do the same but just take that first step and just go ahead believe in yourself <laughs> that's that's really great advice what mindset has helped you push through your hard times like that one specific event you were talking about um i the mindset that i've always had is like i have believed in myself i i believe in the product that i'm offering there have been bad days but i just kept reminding myself that i love what i do and there's a reason that i'm doing it so just keep trying keep showing up even like you don't have to show up for anyone else it's for yourself so just keep going i just kept telling myself that just show up <laughs> looking ahead what's next for mestella by muskan are there any new ventures that you are looking and planning for so we might start classes and workshops soon because i want my customers and you know mostly they are the other ones inquiring about classes so i want them to maybe see how we do things and maybe they can also learn something and then we might launch a new cakes and desserts menu soon and we are constantly working on our catering presentations menu everything also we have a pop up in december in sundar nursery so it will be like desserts and some savory products so i'm excited for that so to our viewers that is where you have to be <laughs> Yes please <laughs> That sounds really amazing. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on those developments. <laughs> As we wrap up, do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners? Something to inspire them as they embark on their entrepreneurial journey. Um as I I mean I can't emphasize enough on consistency like just be consistent and just make up your mind before you start that This is what you have to do this is what your passion is do it passionately do it with love and just keep going believe in yourself believe in what you are offering and it should be it should make sense to you first and you should be able you should be proud of it that you're going to do this so just definitely thank you so much muskan for sharing your journey and insights with us today It's been incredibly inspiring to hear about your experiences. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, we hope that this conversation has sparked some ideas and inspirations for your own entrepreneurial path. Do not forget to check out Mestella by Muskan on Instagram for some amazing home experiences. Until next time, this is your host Pratik Wangnu signing off from Fixie Food Varta Season 2. See you in the next episode.